I, ho I hope you're having a great day. Well, today I want to talk about life after a gallbladder surgery. Once you've had your gallbladder removed, now removing a gallbladder is a pretty controversial subject. There are a lot of people whose gallbladders get removed just when they have stones and you know they're not told that there's a way to you know observe if those stones grow to a particular size and all of that stuff but we're not going to talk about that today we're going to talk about if you already have your gallbladder removed we need to understand that once your gallbladder is removed a lot of people suffer from abdominal pain a lot of gas a lot of acidity and a lot of bloating there are simple lifestyle changes that you can make if your gallbladder is removed and lead a completely normal healthy life it's as simple as that number one thing is to understand that there are two kinds of gallstones one which is basically residual cholesterol and these form and harden into stones and the second is usually pigments basically if you have a higher bilirubin levels caused by the breakdown of your red blood cells these harden over time and form stones as the stones grow bigger and bigger that's when it starts creating a problem with your gallbladder in some cases the gallbladder gets distended and twisted and then in those cases you definitely need surgery because there's no way to flush the stone out of your gallbladder but in many 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 cases if the gallbladder is not twisted there's a huge chance where you can flush out the stone by making lifestyle changes yes there are epsom flushes and all of that which you need to do under supervision because you want to make sure that the size of the stone while getting flushed out doesn't get stuck and at the same time there are normal natural lifestyle changes like changing your diet to make sure that you don't have residual cholesterol build up and form these stones those, those are changes that you can make as well. Well, now if you've had your gallbladder removed, the number one thing that you always have to remember is you cannot eat a heavy meal like you probably used to eat before. You have to have light meals. And if you have too much of oily or greasy food, that's gonna put a lot of pressure and that's when you start feeling the pain and the abdominal gas and all the bloating starting to happen. Immediately after your gallbladder surgery, you wanna make sure that your diet is absolutely light. At least 70% of your diet should be liquids or pureed forms of foods. The oil has to be minimum, minimum. The problem is not with the oil, the problem is with the quantity of oil. So deep fried food, shallow fried food, greasy food, that's the number one no for at least the first 10 to 15 days. Then as you start getting better and healing, you can definitely have oil and you can definitely have a little bit of fried food or clean deep fried food, but you cannot have a large portion. Because if you have a large portion of this, you're gonna to make too much of bile flow into your intestine causing most of the solution, which was usually controlled when you had the gallbladder in the first place. You need to make sure that your diet is rich in fiber, not too much of fiber, but rich in fiber. Most of us have a lack of fiber in our diet. So I'm talking about your fruits, I'm talking about your vegetables. Adding something called isabgul or psyllium husk, a tablespoon mixed with water 30 minutes before your lunch and dinner will give you immediate relief and will also be light on your system. So adding fiber to your diet the right way, not overdoing it on fiber, because if you overdo it on fiber, you can also cause irritation in your gut. So number one thing is to make sure that your oil is reduced, your greasy processed foods, sugar, too much of sugar and junk food will definitely cause a problem with your system because your body has to work harder to break down these inflammatory foods. So you wanna to try to keep your diet as clean as possible. And if you're eating something that's sweet, make sure it's in very, very small portions and small quantities. Nuts and seeds, this will be great for your system as well because nuts have the right kind of fats, the essential fatty acids built in, which is not too much and not too less. So you can't go wrong with nuts, you can't go wrong with seeds. So basically what we're talking about is a balanced diet. Now you wanna have a castor oil pack. You wanna have a castor oil pack in the abdominal area if you get too much of pain post your gallbladder surgery. You could use this pack every day for about 12 to 15 days until the symptoms, the pain and the inflammation comes down completely. Apple cider vinegar mixed with water is also fantastic. So I always say, take a tablespoon of psyllium husk, take a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar with the mother culture, mix it with water, a good glass of water, and have that 30 minutes before your lunch and 30 minutes before your dinner. Now the oils that you wanna use are lighter oils. So if you're having a salad, you wanna use an extra virgin olive oil to add to your salads, just as a drizzle, just in small quantities. And of course, if you're using oils to fry foods or deep fry foods, you wanna use oils that have a higher heating temperature. You know, like your pure ghee or your pure coconut oil, these have high heating temperatures, which are good for frying. 
You want to make sure that your calcium levels are good and that you're on an omega-3 for sure. So if you're non-vegetarian, you can do a fish oil supplement. If you're vegetarian, you can do a flaxseed oil supplement, or you can try to get it out of your wholesome foods. If you're eating fatty fish or you're considering foods like walnuts and flax seeds, which are high in omega-3 by itself. Lentils also play a role in this. So you want to look at your moong dal, the green moong dal that's very light in the system and that won't bloat you up. You may want to stay away from things like red kidney beans, rajma and chana in the first 12 to 15 days and then slowly introduce it back into your diet in case you have too much of gas. So once your gallbladder is removed, this is what you do for the first 15 to 20 days. But for a lifetime, you'll have to understand that you can never have a large portion of food, especially if it's fried. Because the moment you do that, you'll immediately start bloating up, producing gas and more acids that results in an abdominal uh, pain or an abdominal cramp. Other than that, you gotta look after your system. The very fact that you formed gallstones in the first place, your body's trying to tell you that you need to change your diet. You need to have a more wholesome diet, rich in fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, and your lentils. So your body's already given you a symptom that it was storing all of this unnecessary stuff that developed into stones. So listen to that first symptom and start making a dietary change. Remember, it's not just a dietary change. You want to add exercise to that because exercise means blood circulation. Blood circulation means you're carrying oxygen and nutrients from the food that you eat to trillions of cells in the human body, coupled with your good sleep and managing your stress levels. And that's how you have a normal lifestyle after your gallbladder has been removed. Now, what a way is to prevent your gallbladder from being removed? Exactly the same solution. Go easy on high fat foods. Make sure you're not overdoing it on junk, processed, deep fried foods. Remember, there are good fats and there are bad fats. You wanna make sure that you have more of the good fats going into your system. A lot of exercise because you'll see gallbladder stones settling in most people who have a sedentary lifestyle. So you wanna make sure that there's a constant flow of blood because blood carries good stuff to your cells and it also removes the bad stuff from your cells and toxins at the same time. So that's the best way to prevent it. When it comes to flushes, we've already done a video on how if you have small gallstones, how you can flush it out with, an, with the Epsom salt cleanse. There's a lot of negative stuff about Epsom salt cleanses and stuff. Of course, you need to look at the contradictions. If you have low blood pressure, you definitely don't want to do that. But these are things which are natural and they come with no side effects. So if you do it with supervision and your medical professionals are in the loop about this cleanse, there's nothing wrong with using olive oil. There's nothing wrong with using apple juice, apple cider vinegar and orange juice and Epsom salt to flush out stones from your system. There have been hundreds and thousands of people who were who were slated for surgery, but they did the flush, they flushed out about 200 to 300 stones, and when they went in for their scans, their doctor said they no longer had to do that surgery. But you need to make an informed decision about that. Remember, this is not a replacement for your doctors or their advice. It's just something that you can consider doing it. If it works for you, great. If it doesn't, you must follow your medical advice. Until next time, have a great day, everyone. Eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.